I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, what I thought we'd do, uh, it's been a really busy session and a lot of stuff's happened. We just wrapped up the session on uh, Wednesday. And so what I thought I'd do is I'd kick off just by talking about some of the big stuff that got done in the session. And then, but I'm going to leave plenty of time for questions because I want to answer whatever's on your mind. And then uh, there's a couple things, if they don't come up in questions, I'm going to circle back and hit at the end. But, uh, back. Yeah, circle back. Yeah, but I, for, I just like to say, first of all, thank you all for spending part of your Saturday with me. I know there's a lot more exciting things to be doing when the sun's out uh, than uh, listening to me gap, but I do it. Really shut you down important. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, so the, the, the really big things that sent me to Topeka, um, you know, that caused me to knock all them doors and, uh, and uh, put out all them signs and all that were, in my mind, really the big freedom issues. The issues that just are fundamental to who we are. And that was important to me when I started, but it became super important to me when COVID hit and all of a sudden, you know, a lot of things that we, st we took for granted all of a sudden were up for debate. And so um, on that note, we got a lot of things accomplished this, uh, this session uh, in, in kind of that area. Uh, the first one, and probably, you know, if, I, if this is my only term and I never serve again, the proudest vote that I took this term was in, uh, was in support of the right to life, including for the unborn. Um, this, this session, um, you know, last session, they tried to overturn a Supreme Court decision from April 2019, and they failed. And what the Supreme Court decision did um, is it basically elevated the uh, threshold to create regulations on the abortion industry um, from reasonable uh, burden to strict scrutiny. And what strict scrutiny means is ba basically it made abortion a right co-equal with the right to speech or the right to religion um, and really made it impossible to place any restrictions at all on the abortion industry. And we're not talking about, you know, we're, we're not talking about banning abortion here. We're talking about your teenager has to come talk to you before they go have an abortion. Uh, you know, the taxpayers don't have to fund abortions because a lot of people don't believe that, you know, abortion uh, should be legal. And so you shouldn't have to use your tax dollars to pay for it. Uh, common sense restrictions like uh, banning partial birth abortion. Um, all those restrictions were placed at risk by this uh, Supreme Court decision. Hi, how are you? Um, all those decisions were placed at risk by that Supreme Court decision. And it wasn't a hypothetical either, because just a couple of weeks ago, um, a Kansas court using that decision from the Supreme Court struck down a ban on dismemberment abortions that had been on the book for five years. And so um, it, it's, not a, it's not a hypothetical, it's a, a real concern that your rights and my rights through our legislators to place common sense restrictions on the abortion industry had been had been eliminated by by uh, unelected judges. And so at the beginning of the session, they tried to reverse it last year by placing a constitutional amendment on the ballot, but they fell four votes short. And all four of those uh, Republicans that voted against the constitutional amendment, um, they didn't come back. And so we had a larger, stronger pro-life majority and we were able to take another shot at this uh, at this constitutional amendment. Um, and it, right at, right out of the gate at the beginning of the uh, session, we were able to vote on that. And uh, like I said, it's one of the proudest votes that I took uh, during my time uh, in the legislature uh, representing you. Um, it was overwhelming. Uh, they they passed it with two votes to spare, which doesn't sound overwhelming, but that's more than a two thirds majority. And all that did was give us the right next year to vote on whether it's gonna be on, on the, in the Constitution, right? Because the, uh, um, the, the legislature can only propose a constitutional amendment. It's our Constitution, we the people's Constitution. And so we'll all get to vote for it and it has to get a majority vote uh, next August in order to become a part of our Constitution. I've heard a lot of, I've heard a lot of people uh, start, start to test out arguments 
for next year when uh, this comes on the ballot, because I'll tell you what, the abortion industry, Planned Parenthood, and all the pro-abortion lobbyists have already started dumping money here in Kansas. I mean, it's uh, millions and millions and millions of dollars preparing the way for uh, this this uh, 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 this election next year to decide on whether it becomes constitutional amendment. And some of the some of the uh, the arguments you hear are easily knocked down, like, well, you know, you're gonna, you're banning abortion. No, we're not banning abortion. We're just going back to where we were in April 2019 before the uh, uh, before uh, the Supreme Court decision. But another argument that I heard, uh, it kind of when you first hear it, it does kind of like, yeah, why are we doing that? And so I wanted to talk about that really quick because you're going to hear it next year. And it uh, the the argument that I've heard people uh, in from the abortion lobby uh, talk about <coughs> is, well, you're going to enshrine, um, you're going to enshrine. Uh, anti-abortion language in the Constitution, and why is abortion even mentioned in the Constitution? Well, that's not our fault that we're having to do that. And they are, they are right. We are going to put in the Constitution that there's not an inalienable right to an abortion. It's uh, basically, we're de- de-elevating it from where the Supreme Court elevated it by making it a co-equal inalienable right with the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, so I don't want to have to write in the Constitution that abortion, you know, there's no inalienable right to an abortion, but they made us, right? I mean, that the fact that um, the fact that um, they made this decision forced us to do this to clarify that it is not uh, that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which is where the Supreme Court found this right, um, is not doesn't include abortion. Um, Another argument that I'd make is, well, you know, we, uh, we, with the constitutional amendment that abolished slavery, we put slavery for the first time in the American Constitution. Con- contrary to those, you know, radicals out there that are trying to rewrite our history by saying that this country was founded on slavery, they intentionally do not speak to the, uh, the horrible institution of slavery in the U.S. Constitution because the northern states never wanted it. The reason that life, liberty, and it's called life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness instead of life, liberty, and property as it was originally formulated by John Locke is because the northern states did not want the southern states to say, well, right, you know, any of the right to property, that includes my slaves. And they didn't want that. So they intentionally didn't put that language in there. And so nowhere in the Constitution does it mention the institution of slavery until the constitutional amendment that abolishes it. So there is a precedent for taking these concepts that were not in the original, in language that were not in the original constitution and putting them into the constitution to make perfectly clear that some things are beyond the pale of, uh, you know, of uh, what our state or our country want to accept. And so um, I'll tell you, talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors about this over the next year because it's already starting. Uh, you know, the abortion lobby is already out. Um, I, you know, if, it's probably not on any of your Facebook feeds because they know you're gonna vote for the amendment, but the people that are swing voters that they think they can persuade, all, already all over Facebook, they're being targeted with Facebook ads about how Kansas is trying to ban abortion. And so talk to your neighbors. Um, if, if, you know, if you don't know how to talk to them about it, let me know, and I'll go talk to your neighbors because I'm going to be out again in July, start knocking doors. I'll talk about that a little bit at the end. But um, we got it. We got to. We got to get people out to the polls next year uh, to vote on this issue. Now that the machines are we secure? Yeah, I'm coming around to that. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so the. Um, at, at, well, I can talk about it now. Um, all this secure and a freedom that we did this year in the legislature doesn't mean anything if they steal our freedom again at the ballot box, right? And so I'm, I am in the elections committee. Um, I, I'm you know, one of, I think it's 12 or 16 people who are on the elections committee. And we hear all the proposed legislation on elections. And boy, let me tell you, um, some of the folks that come out in opposition to these bills, um, 
I'm not sure what plant they came from. Some of them are the old favorites like the ACLU and you know, um, but some of them are these activist groups that are actively out every election ballot harvesting. And there are really two, two or three big things that we wanted to, to address in this election, um, it, for the next election, uh, in this legislature for the next election. Uh, one of them was that ballot harvesting issue. If you don't know what ballot harvesting is, um, just go out your front door uh, when the mail-in ballots go out and just, just watch. I mean, you will see dozens of kids that you've never seen before that ain't from Leavenworth just flooding our district harvesting ballots. What they do, that what the what the other party does is they and a lot of the activist groups that support the other party do is they canvass the uh, the uh, voter rolls and they find people that they know or would vote for their candidate if they voted but they never vote and then they send them dozens of ballot requests until they finally give up and send one in. And then when the ballot shows up at their door, they show up at their door and they help them fill out the ballot and then they grab their ballot and they carry it in. That is essentially industrial manufacturer votes. Um, and it's outside groups, often outside of the state of Kansas, in my opinion, unduly influencing our elections. And so we did a couple things to try to combat that this session. We got absentee ballots in the mail when my children, who are in the military now, yeah. coming to our door. And I called the voter person here, yeah. and her response was, what? I said, well, what happens if I throw these out for my kids? Yeah. Well, that's illegal. Well, yeah, <laughs> I don't do things yeah. illegally, but there's a whole lot of people yeah. out there that do. Or stop at my mailbox at the end of the road. It's yeah. Well, I tell you, you know, when I when I go out and I knock doors, what I'm using is a list of registered voters. And when I go up to a door, there'll be six names, and there'll only be two people living at the house. There'll be the two people that live there, the two people that lived there before them, and then the two people that lived there before them, and maybe some kids that went off to college and never changed their voter registration. Now that's another issue um, that we also need to clean up but that's a federal law. There are federal laws that prevent our county clerk from taking people off the voter rolls until several election cycles later and under certain circumstances. And that definitely needs to be fixed, but it ain't getting fixed in this Congress. So go out and vote next year and uh, get us some more uh, Democrat or some more Republican uh, candidates in Congress. I mean, we, our congressmen and our senators, the folks we vote on are Republicans and they've They've been staunch supporters of secure elections, but you know, Sharice Davids down in, in Kansas City, she's, you know, she never saw elections, she didn't steal. So, um, but anyways, the laws that we were able to get past this session was first, um, if you're gonna send a ballot request to somebody, you have to put in like 14 font, big letters on the bottom of that thing that you're not from the government because people, were getting these things and they thought, oh, the county clerk didn't get my request. They fill it out again, fill it out again, fill it out again. So if you put in big letters, you know, we're from the ACLU or we're from Appleseed Coalition or we're from Loud Light or one of these other liberal activist groups that send ballot requests out, people at least know that they're being they're being solicited uh, for their vote. They're not, um, they're not, you know, this isn't the government asking them to fill out the form. And then the other thing we did was uh, we made it so that a person can only uh, turn in 10 ballots that are not their own. I, as, now, I wanted, I wanted four, and I proposed an amendment to make it four, and it didn't pass because they needed, you know, they needed the super majority because they knew it was gonna get vetoed, and it did get vetoed, and we overrode the veto. So 10 was the compromise. I'm coming back next session and I'm gonna to try to lower the number again, but at least we got a limit now, because you had kids grabbing 80, 90, 100 ballots and taking them over to the county and turning them in, and there was no, it was completely legal. But let me tell you something else. This is crazy. I, 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 it blew my mind when I heard it, but this is completely legal too. As a candidate, I can go to your house, 
if you've got a mail-in ballot, I can stand over you while you fill it out. And if you're disabled, I can even fill out your ballot for you. And then I can take your ballot and I can walk it in and turn it in. If I did that at the polling place, that's electioneering and they right. would take me to jail. But if I do it in your living room, it used to be completely legal. We passed a law this session. It's not, it's not legal anymore. Now you're, you're, you're committing a crime if you do that. The same as if you do it at the polling place. Um, I, it blew my mind, but a Democrat actually got up and gave an impassioned speech about how he does it all the time. It's not a hypothetical, he does, it's a, a Democrat in Topeka, got up on the floor of the house, it was like 11.30 at night, so I was the only one listening probably, but, but he, uh, he got up on the floor of the house and said, yeah, I do this all the time, what's the problem? No wonder they're the minority. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, it's surprising that any Republicans get elected at all. Shoot, if I could fill out everybody's ballots, I wouldn't be holding a town hall, right? I just, uh, just send me your ballots, I'll take care of it. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, honestly, I personally, to me, there's nothing more fundamental than confidence in our elections. When we lose, when we are no longer sure that the person that has the most votes actually legitimately won the election, our democracy's done. Now we're back to fighting each other with guns the big and sticks. Right now, though, yeah, especially with exactly. all these audits that are going yeah. on. A lot of yeah. people are saying, I don't have trust in these. Yeah, in exactly. And so yeah, right. I, 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 we've made very positive progress, I think, this session here in Kansas. So you can be sure the next one, because there's no national elections, it's uh, you know governor on down. Uh, you can be sure this one is uh, reasonably secure. And the next one's going to be even more secure if I have anything to do about it, because I'm going to go right back next session, and I'm going to attack this problem even so more. So Lord Dominion, no but, yeah. no so, at all. There, are, there were three counties last session that uh, used the Dominion uh, voting machines, and it's my understanding that they're all not using them this next election. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh yeah, there's also gonna be redistricting. So uh, the lines may get redrawn and she might have a little tougher race. They may get redrawn, they're gonna get redrawn. Yeah, they're gonna get redrawn. The thing is, we don't have the data yet. I don't know if you guys have heard this, but the Biden administration's been sitting on the census data um, we, you got the big numbers, so we know that like our population growth stank because people were moving out of the state, but we didn't get the granular by precinct data yet that you need in order to draw the lines. And so that's not coming until September. So this fall, we'll be fighting it out in the, in the in, uh, committees on redistricting. We, they might call us back to vote. I don't know if they do, I'm going back and voting, but, um, but they're gonna redistrict this year. Um, another another big uh, kind of big ticket uh, thing that we hit on uh, personal and you know uh, and personal liberty and freedom is the emergency management statutes. Um, our emergency management statutes were written for floods and fires and tornadoes, right? You know, a couple weeks. You know, they got to get you got to cut through red tape, get the police in there, get people safe, get people food get the National Guard mobilized. Our emergency management statutes were not written for, you know, a COVID epidemic that lasts, you know, 16 months or 15 months or however long this night here has been going on. Um, it was not written for that. And also, frankly, our emergency management uh, statutes were written with a implicit trust that our governor would follow the constitution and not, uh, not abuse our personal liberty and freedom, right? Yeah. And yeah, I mean, in retrospect, that seems silly, but at the time we thought, you know, people that, people that are gonna raise their hand and swear an oath are gonna uphold their oath. Um, and that's not what's happened. Um, you know, May 21st uh, of last year, um, last day of the session last year, Sonny died. I was out on the Capitol lawn with 200 of my closest friends and we were all demanding that the, uh, that the legislature do something. Because I don't know if you can, I mean, it's, a lot's happened in this last year, but if you remember last year, gyms and bars were still closed. In a lot of places, restaurants were still closed. The restaurants that were open could only do takeout, or if they could dine in, you know, it was like half or quarter capacity. Um, you know, the, it, it was, 
I mean, we our freedoms were just being stomped on. And uh, so I went out there with, like I said, 200 of my closest friends, and we demanded that the, that the legislature do something. The way the, way the uh, session works is bound by the Constitution. They're only allowed to meet, the legislature's only allowed to meet for 90 days, 90 total work days. If they wanna, if they wanna meet for, for more, they need a super majority in both houses in order to meet more. If they wanna be, come back in special session, they have to come, all of them come back and meet in special session. So when you're trying to pass a law on the very last day, um, it has, the governor has to agree. Because if she vetoes it, you know, she can sit on it for 10 days, you're out of session, and then she vetoes it, you have to like bring everybody back, two thirds majority, to vote to have another session in order to override the veto. So they had to negotiate with her, and she actually ended up vetoing the legislation that they came up with anyways. Um, they, they negotiated what we lived under for the last year, which is that the counties can opt out of whatever she, whatever she um, uh, orders. It's a, I mean, it's a Band-Aid, duct tape, bailing wire. They're just trying to patch something together to put some kind of check on her power. Because before that, she could just say, you know what, everybody wear blue hats, because I say blue hats stop COVID. And if you're caught with that blue hat, you're getting a fine. And she could do it. There's nothing anybody could do about it, right? So this was at least some kind of check. Each county, you know, Johnson County, yeah, blue hats, give me a blue hat. <laughs> but out here in Leavenworth, where we got a little <laughs> common sense, we could say, you know, I don't think blue hats cause COVID. We're going to opt out. I think we did a little bit yeah, more yeah, that. exactly. That. Yeah, but the um, th that's the compromise it came up with. She vetoed it and called them back in the special session because she can also call them back. And she called them back and they passed the exact same law and she said, okay, fine. And she signed it. And so that's what we lived under for the last year. But it was always, you know, it was always just like, you know, silly putty and duct tape and bailing wire trying to piece something together until the legislature should, could come back. And so we did come back and we were able to really address this. The first problem that we had was she kept uh, extending the emergency. She could just extend the emergency, extend the emergency, extend the emergency. And what she would say is, um, I need to be able to mobilize the National Guard because we have to distribute PPP or we need to distribute vaccines. Um, I need to um, be able to uh, get federal money and I have to have an emergency declaration to uh, get federal money. And I have to be able to um, keep the courts under an emergency declaration because a lot of the courts were just closed for months and months and months. And there was a Kansas statute that said that you have to get a trial within 180 days. And so she was using an emergency to extend that 180 days. And so we had to fix, we had to do something about those three things or she was just gonna keep extending this thing forever. And then we also needed to put your voice through the legislature back into all those executive orders. So she couldn't you know, tell us to wear blue hats, right? Because uh, uh, like I said, the, put, making the counties opt out is really kind of shifting responsibility, right? It's like, well, I'm not voting on it. Let the counties decide if they want to do it. Now the counties are in the hot seat for a state emergency order. That, that's kind of shifting, frankly, frankly, but it's what they could get past at, 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 the, you know, at the 11th hour and 55 minutes last year. Um, so, we had to do something. And so the first thing we did was we uh, put into law a suspension of that 180 day rule for courts. And I got a lot of grief for that because the way, the way it was publicized was uh, we're suspending the right to a speedy trial for three years. And that is, there, you still have the right to a speedy trial. Um, you, and you can, you know, you can go to a federal court if you feel like your constitutional, your U.S. constitutional right to speedy, speedy trial is being infringed. Um, the truth is that, you know, if somebody is accused of rape or murder or some other horrible crime, they don't want to have a trial because, you know, they probably they're probably not indicted unless there's tons of evidence. 
when they go to the trial, they're going to the big house, you know, and so at least now they're in a county jail. They get, you know, they get visits. They get so their their lawyers have no problem dragging it out, but they also don't want to extend that 180 days because at 180 days their client goes free because we didn't give them a trial. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I didn't want to put murderers and rapists out on the street because the courts were closed, and so we didn't we did not eliminate the right to a speedy trial. And we did not make people wait three years for a trial. All we did is suspend the 180-day law, which was a state law. Um, and so you still have a Kansas and a U.S. constitutional right to a speedy trial. They're working through it. It was a compromise between both the prosecutors and the defense attorneys. They got together and came up with a solution, and we passed that into law. So that took care of that first excuse for why we have to extend emergency orders. The next excuse, um, it was federal money, and I'm gonna come back to that. But then the last excuse was National Guard and, and all the emergency, you know, the, um, the, the emergency operations center, the emergency warehouse, all that stuff, right? Um, I, well, I will deal with the money too. It turns out when you peel back the onion, None of the federal money that we've been getting actually requires the state to have an emergency declaration. It turns out that was BS. And when the lawyers got a hold of it and started peeling it back, it turns out that it's BS. And oh yeah, by the way, there's some emergency money I want us to stop taking. Like that 300 a month that we're paying people to stay home. Um, you know, I just had to close a restaurant in Manhattan permanently. Uh, the, uh, the, our noodle shop in Aggieville is gone forever. Three jobs, actually it's probably six or eight jobs because some of them are part-time, never coming back, gone forever because my employees left. When all the kids left K-State, I had to close the doors for a while. Couldn't get them to come back for a year. And I tried. I mean, you know, we were paying way above minimum wage, but I cannot compete with the money that they're getting from regular unemployment and uh, this 300 a month extra, or 300 a week, I'm sorry, 300 a week extra. I, yeah, so it can come out to like 45,000 a year, and I cannot pay 45,000 a year for a, a server. I stay home. Yeah. And so it's, I care, you stay home. Yeah, and that's, people are making that decision. And I understand when we were at 15% unemployment and all the businesses were closed, I understand why they made that decision, but now we're at 3.5% unemployment. We've got 50 to 70,000 jobs that are unfilled, and uh, we got 33,000 people sitting at home getting this 300 a week. Now can you look at Missouri, because Missouri yeah. stopped that. They stopped theirs. 22 right. states? Yeah, no. yeah, they stopped theirs. The challenge is, We've got a Democrat governor, yeah, no. and because of separation of the powers, we can't make her stop taking it without a constitutional amendment. And it, you saw how long it took to get value them both passed. So that's not going to happen. It's supposed to expire in September, God willing, it will. But we did on the last day we passed a resolution because you can't veto a resolution. Overwhelming support in both houses to tell her it's time to stop and get Kansas back to work. We want you to stop. She probably won't stop. Um, because every single Democrat voted against our resolution, so she probably won't stop. But we did everything that really is within our power except for a constitutional amendment. And constitutional amendment will take two years. Hopefully the stuff's going to end in uh, September. But, you know, I, like I said, I closed my restaurant here uh, a couple weeks ago for good. It's gone. It's never coming back. Hopefully we're going to bring the stuff here and we're going to open one here. But, you know, it's going to be a while where people aren't going to have jobs. But these numbers were... Yeah getting better even yeah. last August, or September, October. Yeah, they were. So they were. And it's, you know, it's, it's something that I've gotten some feedback on my vote. And it's like, well, you were the one screaming about the fact that people couldn't get unemployment. Well, I was screaming about people that needed unemployment back in June and July yeah. when nothing was open and unemployment was 15%. And they still hadn't been paid in January. You owe those people money. You know, the Kansas Department of Labor was completely completely broken and the fraud yeah. yeah and there were as many or more fraudulent claims and there were real claims 600 million dollars or more 
gone forever out of the state coffers. We had to take our COVID relief money to put money back in or all the businesses would have been stuck holding the bag and unemployment insurance would have been as much as income taxes. It would have destroyed the state. But um, we, we've got that fixed now. And now the emails I'm getting are from people whose 300 a week have, has dried up and they want me to get them more. Yeah. I'm like, get a job. Send, me a, send me a resume. That's what I'm asking people. Send me a resume. Now there, I, I want to be clear, there are still some people that are owed money from last year yeah. and I'm still fighting to get those people their money because they legitimately were put out of work and they're, most of them are back to work. Um, but they owe that money. money. They, had to, they had to deplete their savings or run up their credit cards in order to live and feed their families. They deserve their money. And so I'm trying to get them the money. But right now, if you're on unemployment, I am, I, you know, if you have the, one of those legitimate problems, I'm working with you. But if you're asking for unemployment now, I'm probably asking you for a resume. And I'm, you know, contacting some of the businesses in town trying to get you a job. now hiring signs all up and down. Yeah. I mean, we're dying. We're dying for people. We're dying for servers. Lawrence, we're down to three to nine. We're open three to nine because I have no prep chefs. Um, and you go, you walk up and down Lawrence. There, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there's plenty of people, plenty of people that uh, are not working right now. So, but that's the emergency money. So really, at this point, there is, you know, the the issue that is left about why she needs her emergency declaration is, well, I need the emergency operations center open. I need the the National Guard mobilized. I need the emergency warehouse. Why? Yeah, we, why? We're, we're, the vac, everybody who wants to be vaccinated at this point has probably been vaccinated. They're starting to do distribution to doctors because the people that aren't getting vaccinated, the people that have like, you know, I want to see if this thing's real or do I even need it if I've had COVID? A lot of people in that boat. Um, they're going to talk to their doctor and they're making a decision about whether they want to get vaccinated. So we can go to regular vaccine distribution. So, I am confounded as to why she still needs an emergency declaration at all. Well, so, no, she's a Democrat and she wants power. Back. Yeah. There's no common element there at yeah. all. That's the fact. And she and she uh, she doesn't need it. And so the let the uh, in the uh, in the legislation that we passed to repair the Kansas Emergency Management Act, she can't extend her own emergency anymore. She needs the legislature to do it. And since we're out of session. The Legislative Coordinating Council, which is basically the leadership of both houses, which is predominantly Republican, she has to go to them and say, can I extend my, my emergency declaration? And they were as skeptical as I was. So right now her emergency declaration's ending on the 15th of June. Good. Um, and she she wailed, she gnashed teeth. She Take said, back to New York. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm that, New York. We can all do that next year. I we can all do that want, next year. You know, Let's I, do I want to tell yeah. her exactly. You yeah. know, I came here and I became a Kansan yeah. and I've got roots. And I didn't want to bring my New York stuff with yeah. me. But I, I'd love yeah. to be face to face with her, but send her back to stay in New York. <laughs> she doesn't learn she, where she, she learned all this garbage from. She can't even you can't even email her. So meet her face to face hey, is gonna be kinda of tough. So yeah, yeah. I, I she won't even let me I know. did Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. For what that's worth, right? Yeah. You couldn't email yeah. Adolf Hitler yeah. either. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So she's a good company. So that our emergency our emergency declaration ends on June fifteenth. And she wailed the gnashed teeth. To which the Republicans responded, you knew this was going to happen. Yeah. Why didn't you make plan? Say, oh, I can't. You know, the National Guard has to continue to distribute vaccines. <coughs> Why? You've known this was going to happen. Why didn't you regular regularize the distribution? Oh, I need an emergency uh, operations center. You have a Department of Health. They work 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. You know, and all the other vaccines get distributed just fine without their supervision. Why do you, you know, so emergency management, at, the emergency declaration ends on June 15th. Um, I tell you what, if they extend it again, I'm going to be right back on the lawn of the Capitol. And you're all welcome to come with me. I'll get a buzz and we'll go out there and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll give them what for. But I don't think, I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine that, uh, that they're going to extend it again. She's done. June 15th, the emergency declaration is done. Um, I'm not sure we, she didn't steal the election that one.
That's my that, question. I mean, ballot, back and audit that. There was, there was, there was tons, there was, ton, there was tons of ballot harvesting. I mean, I people, I'm kind of, I know I'm the dissenter probably in this room, um, and I'm probably going to get some guff up here, but I'm going to say it. They stole the election fair and square. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't, you know, fix numbers. They didn't, you know, I really don't think that they, they, they monkey with the numbers. I think they stole it fair and square. They used the laws that were on the book. They exploited them in an unethical and an immoral manner in order to steal the election fair and square. Well, that's what that's, the left does, yeah. the right. Yeah, that's we're, what. We're, we yeah. sit here and we're like, well, we're too yeah. good for that. Yeah. Well, at some point. Well, I'll we tell you, the challenge is, yeah, the challenge is, I, hey, I was in that camp, right? I'm like, you know what? If they're going to do it, if, if they're going to go door to door, if they're going to, like, try to grab every mail-in ballot, you know what? Let's do it, too. Republicans don't mail-in vote. Right? Yeah. Who here mail-in voted? Yeah. No, we don't mail-in vote. We yeah. go to the polls. So that's why they can do it, and we can't, because Republicans... We can see it as our civic duty to get off our, our candidate was go to the best. He yeah. is, let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah. He can't win a statewide election. He lost to Roger Marshall. Well, come out for the primary because he's running for AG. No. So. Yeah. It'll be a <laughs> yeah. negative vote. Yeah. So um, the last thing I want to hit, because I want to I want to respect your time, but I also want to leave plenty of time for questions because um, I'm sure there are some issues I'm not going to talk about. The last thing I want to talk about is the local elections. That are coming up this year because what we've discovered over the pandemic or rediscovered that we should have already known is that whatever happens in dc whatever happens in topeka the rubber meets the road at the county at the city and at the school board um you know uh if, if you're on my mailing list, which I'm looking around, I think most of you are, if you're on my mailing list, you know that last year they tried to shut schools down again, and I asked you to send a couple emails um, uh, uh, to, on behalf of our kids to keep our kids in school. Because I'll tell you what I was seeing, when I was walking around knocking doors, parents had to go to work because they had to feed their families because the Department of Labor wasn't gonna give them an unemployment check because it was so broke. And so I would go to I would go to a door and I'd see the, the curtains part and I'd see these two little eyes at about you know three foot and then I would and then they'd close the curtains again and they wouldn't answer the door. People were having to leave their kids home. Alone. And you I don't care, you know, I, I don't know what kind of kid you were, but I was kind of incorrigible. And if you if my parents had left me at home and said, Hey, I need you to attend <coughs> school on a computer from uh, yeah. you know from nine to three, I would have said Yes, ma'am, and then I would have played video games, right? And, and you know, I mean, because kids are kids, right? Plus, you know, I mean, you guys, I'm preaching the choir here, but the interaction, the social interaction that they get, um, the, the, I mean, the huge impact that had on mental health, keeping kids home, the huge number of kids that hurt themselves or, you know, killed themselves. Um, I, I talked to a lot of teachers. The teachers were not the problem. Now, they would not say it openly because they'd lose their jobs, but when I would go to a door of a teacher and I'd ask them, what I would always hear is, I'm so afraid for, for John or I'm so afraid for Mary. I know she's in a situation in her home where she's not safe and she's not being taken care of. And when she'd come to school, she had a safe space, and I always knew that if it got really bad, I could intervene. Now I don't see them. They might even log it in, or they're logging in, and I don't see a face. And so the teachers wanted to teach. They were not the issue. Um, the school board has the authority to make that decision. The school board, your representative, to run our schools and do what's best for our kids, has the authority to force our schools to open. And if the superintendent doesn't want to open the schools, they have the authority to fire them and get a superintendent that will open the schools. Or some principal wants to mandate that parents have vaccines in order to participate in activities with their families fire. in total contravention of, of you know, HIPAA and a million other laws. Um, the school board can call that guy on the carpet. And if they don't like the explanation that he gets, they can fire him. Um, but if we don't pay attention to these local elections, I'm as guilty as anybody. I admit it, you know, before I got involved in, 
in running for office, if you'd asked me who's on the school board, I would have had to go look it up on the internet, at least a few of the names. Um, you know, we have got to, as conservatives, as people who love freedom, start paying attention. Yes, ma'am. The other thing we have to pay attention to as well is don't put aside your churches. I'm in a head-to-head -head fight with my church right now because they don't want to have in VBS, Vacation Bible School, in person with the children. Again, clamp those kids down. Let's not do it. So there's somebody in our church that's playing the, the power game too. So please don't look beyond just because it's a church. There's ugly at every stinking level. Now, I shined a light real good on them. Uh, haven't heard much back from them, but they just said, well, the board decided. Again, get involved. Yes. Ask. Make them at least tell you why. I mean, I, I got some really weird answers why. The, I said, oh, excuse me, there's a church up in Atchison that's got over 200 children already enrolled for in-person VBS. Yes. There's also another church in town here, I don't know the name of it, it's a girlfriend of mine. Um, same thing, in-person. And I asked them, why are you not? What's the difference? Over the last year, politics has really infiltrated yeah. the churches. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I'm, I, it's always been. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's but always it's been. But I, it's I, I, say, I guess yeah. say, yeah. I guess yeah. say, like, I'm not. I don't want anybody to take this. My religion is very good religion, but I'm American Baptist, and two things about us: we can do a potluck with nobody's business, and we're ruthlessly <laughs> democratic. And so, whatever the whole body says. That's that's what happens. So I uh, yeah I, I agree. You gotta you gotta go to those business meetings. You gotta get involved. You gotta talk to the deacons or whatever the elders or whatever your your denomination has leading the church and your pastors. And you know at the end of the day, I mean I hate to say this, but you can vote with your feet too. Oh hey yeah yeah so you did, but yeah. I mean, I'm keeping it yeah keeping the fire by keeping yeah. my name yeah. on the rollers yeah. there. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like that. that. But you know in addition to the churches and the school boards, the city commission. You know, um, uh, the the county opted out of the governor's mask ordinance, and then all the cities opted right back in, right? So here in Leavenworth, um, until March 31st, I think, or yeah, I think it was March 31st, we we're all walking around in masks here. So you know, yeah, so yeah. Well, you know, and I, I, you know, it's funny. I was at, I was in Topeka through the week. And I'm walking around a mask. I'm like the only Republican walking around a mask. And every Republican asks me, what are, you wearing, what are you wearing that stupid thing for? I'm doing it in solidarity with the people of Leavenworth who are living under an ordinance that was opposed on them against their, their will. I mean, it, it really was. Because if, if you don't believe, because I know there are people that wanted the mask ordinance, okay. If you don't believe it was imposed against our will, I have been, I have been, in this town, working in this town, owning business in this town since 2006. I have never seen 40 people on the lawn of City Hall for anything. <laughs> unless they were, ha unless it was an Easter egg hunt, I have never seen 40 people on the lawn of the, cap of the City Hall. There were 40 people out there with signs. And those, those city commissioners had to skulk out of there. And they were shouted at the whole way to their cars. Right. You know, they, they announced the meeting on an irregular day. They announced it uh, in the, they announced it at like four in the afternoon for the next day. And then when they got in there, they had already packed the room with the people who supported a mask ordinance. You could, I called, a lot of people called, couldn't get in to do public comment. They went to emergency final action so they could propose the ordinance and vote on the ordinance at the same time so that the commissioners didn't have 24 hours to get pilloried by their constituents and talked out of it. So if you you believe that that, was a, that, was, that act reflected the will of the people, then I got a bridge out here to sell you. It goes to Missouri and it just got a fresh coat of paint. Okay, so um, we have a chance to hold them accountable for that. This, uh, this November, Actually, we're going to have a primary in August, yeah. and then we're going to have an election in November because so many people are out, out campaigning because they're probably all fired up about this. Um, we have a chance to fix this in November. Um, if you want to know who I like, I'll be happy to tell you. I'm not going to endorse anybody right now because uh, we're, we're early in the process. 
And frankly, I'm kind of a lightning rod, so I don't know if I'll help or hurt by endorsing here in Leavenworth. But but uh, I, if you if you want to ask me, I'd be happy to tell you who I think are the candidates that are going to support and defend our freedom. Um, but I tell you what, get out in August, get out in November. If you don't, you deserve what you get. I hate to put it like that, but you, if you don't vote, you deserve what you get. Now let me go on this. Can you? Well, the Supreme Court judge you may come up for election. Does that have to go through primaries? We can both no, so the way Supreme Court judges, there are no, this is municipal elections okay. this year. No Supreme Court judges are up. The way, so, can I hit that? Can yeah, I hit that please. detail? Because I want to yes, talk about that. I'll yeah. tell you what I want to do next session. Do it. Um, there's a constitutional amendment bouncing around to change how we pick Supreme Court judges. The way we pick Supreme Court judges right now is a panel of lawyers sit down and pick their guys and then they hand the list to the governor it's three people and she picks one of the people that the kansas bar association gave her to pick then they're a judge that's it there's no there's no senate confirmation there's no voice of the people they are they're a supreme court justice every every couple of years they have a retain vote. If you take your ballot and you flip it over, it says retain justice whoever, retain justice whoever, retain judge whoever, yes or no. I don't know about you, but I would have to look, well, you know, there's some good judges on that list, you know? I, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I take the Kansans for life voter guide into the end of the voting booth and I, I know I know like on the you know on con congressional races Senate races governor races I don't I don't sit in court in Atchison so I don't know who's a good judge in Atchison so I take that Kansas for life thing and I flip it over and it, it recommends yes no on judges but honestly I want our Senate who confirms all of our other appointments yeah. to confirm our justices. And if they don't, they, they can dig in and, you know, you voted on this, explain it. You voted, or, you, know, or you, you decided this way, explain it. You decided that way, explain it. And if they can't explain it, they reject them and she has to pick somebody else. So um, that's something that needs to be fixed. But that, it's, that, it's going to require a constitutional amendment. Yeah, it's going to require a constitutional amendment. And it's supported by Kansans for Life, but it's really a much broader you know, broader effort. It's not just about abortion. It's about our, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, uh, when the governor closed the churches, the Kansas Supreme Court upheld her. I mean, it's, it isn't first, it's the very first line of the first amendment that you can't impede somebody's religious practices and they supported it. They should all go. Well, the the should all go. did too, because yeah. our church, yeah. I was on the phone immediately when yeah. that came across the airways and yeah. I said, hey, pastor, are we having Easter Sunday? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm going to stop there uh, with me gabbing about what I want to talk about, and then I'm going to, I'm just going to answer questions. So I was just going to yeah. dovetail on that. Please. You said that uh, Kansas Bar sends the governor three nominees. Nominees. Yeah. Does, does she have to pick from those three, or can she just? She does. She can also send the list back. Okay. So she can send the list back, or she can choose from those three. So basically, a bunch of lawyers and the governors pick the Supreme Court. Okay, can they collude with each other? Of course they do. And then go, <laughs> of course they do. What? Says, what? Says, I'm shocked. The governor says, I want shocked. this person. I want this person to put them on the list, and then I get the list, and then I pick that person. I'm shocked yeah. to discover there's gambling. And the thing is, they give, the family. lawyers give money to her, yeah. yeah, and they all know each other. Yeah. It's that it's just, it's just the, yeah. the swamp in Topeka with the lawyers and the swamp in D.C. is degrees of separation. It's the same concept all the way. Hey, through. haven't okay. you ever gotten that thing in the mail saying, hey, we can make this ticket go away real fast? Mm -hmm. And it's from a judge to a lawyer and a lawyer back to the judge. And then it goes away. That's how greasy together they are with making their own laws. Now, these days from the Supreme Court has obviously gone against the U.S. Constitution. I take it that our Secretary of State has no guts to go ahead and push that to the Supreme Court and get on their docket. Is that the bottom line on that? Yeah. I mean, why we're subject to there, there are some. There are some things that the 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 uh, the U.S. Supreme Court will only 
hear cases that in some way touch the U.S. Constitution. Right, that would be one. So, and that's what happened. On the closing of the churches, they took it to a district court, and the district court basically said, you're not allowed to close churches. They stayed the order, and then they said, we're going to have a hearing on it, and the governor withdrew the order because she knew she was going to lose in court. So, but a lot of other things, like, you know, Kansas, like, for instance, the abortion ruling. Right. You know, it's a rule, they used a ruling on the Kansas Supreme Court to basically create unrestricted abortion in the state of Kansas. Right. And you can't take that to the federal court because the federal court right now, where we waive the law of the land, you can be less restrictive, but you can't be more restrictive. So, yeah. How are the three governors now that have signed the heartbeat law, Arkansas, Mississippi, and I think Texas? Yeah. So we had that without a constitutional amendment. Yeah, we have, the reason, no, the reason we had to pass the constitutional amendment is because the constitution, the Kansas Supreme Court's decision basically said you can't restrict abortion, period. And so until you fix that, there's no point in passing another law because they're already striking down the laws that are on the books. So now once we get the Supreme Court case in place, then we can go back and we can start, first of all, dismemberment abortion needs to be against the law in Kansas. So we need to repass that law that they struck down, you know, and yeah, then we can go back to kind of business as normal. Yes, ma'am. Is there something in the works for this next session on the critical race theory stuff? Because that stuff is gross. So I can do with it. So in Kansas, in the constitution, the legislature has very little power to direct what schools teach because we have an elected board of education at the state level. And so state boards of education and local boards of education or school boards decide what's taught in our schools. So the only way, and the way it's really insidious how the new president is trying to insert this in our schools. They're offering money to schools. If you take it, we'll give you this new curriculum and you can teach this stuff in our schools, right? And they call it all these innocuous, feel good kind of names. And so the governor, through separation of powers, it's the same reason that we can't order her to stop taking the $300 in education. Separation of powers, she has the right to accept federal money. But then in our constitution, the state board of education decides what gets taught, what is allowed to be taught in the state. So the state board of education and our local boards of education are where we got to stop CRT. We are not going to be able to stop it in the legislature. Where does the state board of education sit on the spectrum of right, center, and left? Yeah, honestly, they voted to power down to the schools on all of the COVID restrictions. So to me, that's conservative, right? If you say, I'm not going to tell you how to do it, local school board, you do it. To me, that's conservative. And so I would say they're conservative. They're going to send it to the school. Johnson County is going to be teaching some critical race theory, I imagine. But we have the opportunity to stop it here if we all come out and we get on the conservative base. Yeah. Or, yeah, get the school's base, but it's a lot easier to make that argument when you're talking to people who agree with you. So let's get conservatives on the school board. But thank you for bringing that up. I wish, I wish there were a way to just ban it in the state of Kansas, but it's just. It's going to destroy it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. Any other questions? Yeah, I got this idiot that's up for a nomination to the ATF. Yeah. The blind piece of crap that he is. Where do we stand in the state of Kansas? I know we're supposed to be a Second Amendment sanctuary state. And I know that certain counties have said that we will not enforce federal nothing. Yeah. So, but the point is that the minute they say that, and I go make my own suppressor, I go build my own SBR. Yeah. 
Yeah. There's no mechanism to prevent the ATF from coming yeah. in and doing And frankly, that. that's happened, right? Because yes, uh, we passed a law about suppressors like Texas no. just passed, and there are two people sitting in prison right now because exactly. they followed the state law and the ATF made an example right. of them. Um, I've, uh, you know, a lot of states are doing this kind of pre-nullification thing yes. where, um, you know, basically becoming a sec Second Amendment sanctuary yes. state. So I, I was like, hey, let's do that, right? Because honestly, Kansas is the most, in my opinion, the most Second Amendment friendly state we in the union right now. The yeah, I, I am the first. We just passed constitutional care. Or we just passed, we just expanded this session and overrode the veto on expanding uh, concealed carry reciprocity right. and also extending concealed carry 18 to 20 with right. with the license. Well, that's all good. I get the license. So that, in my opinion, that makes us now number one in Second Amendment oh, yeah. in the country. Um, but I do get a lot of questions about why don't we pass these laws? Um, I, you know, I went to the smartest lawyer I knew in the legislature, uh, a Republican named Furbat, and I talked to him about this issue. Um, actually, I talked to a couple lawyers that are, are legislators about the issue. You can't nullify a law or a rule before it's passed. Correct. And so, then I asked the natural question: Well, what are these? Uh, what are all these other states doing with these Second Amendment uh, sanctuary uh, state bills? And both of them told me, not in these words, but they are making things to put on their postcards for re-election because those laws don't do anything until this jerk that they want to make the head of the ATF starts mm -hmm. passing these regulations. Once they start passing regulations, we can uh, we can start passing laws to nullify it. It goes into the federal courts because we're nullifying a right. federal, and the, the, the conservatives control the Supreme Court. We're gonna win those cases. And in the meantime, they can't enforce them because they're tied up in court. But are, is that in the works? Is somebody working yeah. on that? The one that oh, the bill. The bill. That? You have to wait. You have to wait for them to issue the. You have to wait for them to issue the executive order or the law because you can't. I can't blanket right. nullify. But, but is yeah. there? Yeah. Oh, other believe me. Believe me. If they if they ban the AR-15, we're going to have a special fet session of the legislature. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I believe me. If, if they if they do some of the stuff he talked about in his uh, Senate hearing, we he will have a scan. Yeah. The yeah. He can't yeah. be the head of it. Well, well you know, I mean, we ought to have no idea to begin with. Now, I just I would say to everybody in this room, and I'd say to everybody who's listening to this video later, elections have consequences, mm -hmm. and all those people that you know were wagging their tongues about how horrible Donald Trump was, and he was telling you this is what's gonna happen if you elect this guy. This is what we got because of mean tweets. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so, election of consequences. Yes, yeah. this is definite yeah. provable fraud. Yeah. And that's all oh, we yeah. have now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, gonna be suck to, it's gonna suck to be the former vice president because I have a feeling that the, the courts can no longer turn a blind eye when the evidence yeah. is out there. Arizona's right there. Michigan and Anthem, yeah. Wyndham, New Hampshire, yeah. uh, you name them, there's outright fraud. And I'll tell you, just, mm -hmm. I hate to tell you, go on right down and look. There's actually videos out there where there's a forensic scientist, a forensic computer scientist that took the Anthem machines apart and found on it, a, embedded the motherboard, a, three, a 4G communication device that proved that those machines were networked into the internet to Dominion you go ahead and change the votes because if you look at what Lindell said, all of those things, there's absolutely zero chance that they all happen at the same, within the same two hours and with the same quantitative jump for Biden. So the point is that I don't care what anybody says, you can't suppress the truth. The truth is going to come out and it sucks to be you if you're on the wrong end of the truth. Yeah. And I'll tell you, if, uh, if, you guys all remember the whole brouhaha over the uh, over the Georgia uh, election yeah. laws yeah. that they just passed. Right. Um, that was really for them the uh, their. Uh, I mean, the laws were completely reasonable, right? They're basically they're doing the same thing that Kansas was doing, but they had a lot more issues, so there were a lot more things to tighten up. They're basically tightening up their election laws. You know, the left came out hard. The media came out hard, trying to. Uh, you know, trying to stop them because Kansas, you know, Philadelphia or Pennsylvania 
um, you know, Arizona, all these other states were doing the same thing in their legislators, legislatures, because the state legislatures still control election law. And so I'll tell you what, it's gonna be a different battlefield next year for the next congressional elections and, uh, and yeah. uh, in our state, the governor's race, than it was in the last election. Yeah. You know, when I, was in the, when I was in the election committee and we were hearing all these bills, because I, I had a lot more stuff I wanted to do and I'm coming back, I'm gonna try to plug some more holes next session. But what these, uh, what these uh, opponents would always say, I knew what they were gonna say when they came on, because you know, they, they're, COVID's gonna kill them, they couldn't come in person, they had to be on Zoom, <laughs> oh. that, or WebEx. They'd come on and they would, uh, I knew what they were gonna say before they spoke. They'd say two things, they'd say, you know, the Kansas Secretary of State says that there were no major irregularities in the Kansas elections last year, and so this is a solution in search of a problem. And when I say to that, what I said on the floor of the House um, when we were debating these uh, issues was it's, it's a problem because it's not an irregularity to go into somebody's house and fill out their ballot for them and walk it in and turn it in for them. It's a, it's a problem because it's not an irregularity to send 12 ballot request forms from out of state to every voter in my district. Right. It's a, I mean, so what, you know, like <clears throat> what I said, and I, I know that there's passions on, on every part of this issue, but I really think that the, that the other side stole this election fair and square. They stole it by exploiting bad laws. Bad laws that relied on people being good actors and acting morally and ethically. And so we've got to tighten them up. And I, that's what we've done across, across the United States in these state legislatures. That's why they were wailing and gnashing teeth when uh, Georgia passed that law. Yeah. That's why they're trying to get HR 1 S 1 passed because it'll basically take the legislatures out of the equation so the Congress can rig the election you know, forever. Right. So, um, that, so I, I, think that, I think that it's gonna be a completely different battlefield here for the next year. You know, note that also the Georgia upgrades to their voting processes. All the hoopla that went over it in the left stream in a moment, yeah. New Jersey has the same or stricter. Yeah. Massachusetts, two blue states, have the same or stricter. Yeah. Delaware. It's all just yeah. a bunch of crap. Yeah, yeah. Huh? exactly. Delaware. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Exactly, but they don't have to worry about Democrats win in there, so it's okay if their laws are strict. Don't want any Republicans win it. But. Another question, another issue. Um, vaccines for kids and going back to school is... Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you for bringing it up. And, and masks yeah. for kids. I, okay. All these issues, all these issues are <laughs> school board school issues. issues. Okay. All these issues are school board issues. The Kansas Department of Health, the the Secretary of Health and Environment, Lee Norman, he can set the vaccine list for what a kid's required to have, but the COVID vaccine has not been approved by the FDA, and he can't mandate a vaccine that hasn't been approved by the FDA. And so in the short term, he can't mandate COVID vaccine. But what I'm more worried about is he can't mandate it, yep. but if you don't have it, okay. then your kid has to be And a so, <laughs> to plug that hole, so to plug that hole, uh, what we did at the state level, would, what we could do, because you know there is that separation of powers with school boards, what we could do is we could decide what state money does and does not get spent on. And so we passed in the budget, I'm gonna tell you, I voted against the bill, and I'm gonna circle back around to explain why I voted against the bill, but I knew the bill was gonna pass, because it's this omnibus budget. There's all this crap in the budget, right? And so I supported this measure, but I couldn't vote for the whole bill, and I'll circle back to say why, but it, I knew it was gonna pass. If, I, if it was on the line, I would've voted for it. I would've held my nose and voted for it. But the, the specific measure was that um, the state cannot spend money on a vaccine passport, anything that like anything official from the state that says you've had a vaccine, and the state, no state agency, no agency that receives state money, including your school, can demand a vaccine passport. So basically, they can say whatever they want, but there's no way to prove who has and who has not had the vaccine, whether it's at the DMV or it's at the school. Um, there's they cannot require an official passport. So that. That, I know it's not perfect. 
we're dealing in the realm of the real world where we can do what we can do, but I think that that puts a really big, a really big stopper on their ability to do that. Now, the reason I voted against the bill is not because of that. I love that. If I could have voted for it twice, if somebody got up from their desk, I would have voted twice. But the reason I didn't vote for it is because it also gave the judges a 15% raise. Oh, and I'm not man. giving these guys a raise that just you know made all these crazy decisions last for, last year. And by the way, state uh, uh, the courts, the court employees, and the judges were the only state employees that got a raise in our budget. 15%. None of the state employees, yeah, 15%. None of the other state employees got a raise. I couldn't vote for that. And so I knew the bill was going to pass because, and I wanted the, the vaccine measure, and so I felt safe voting against it just to say I'm not giving these jerks a raise and not giving. You know, our corrections officers at Lansing Correctional Facility for a year had to walk in the hottest hot spot in the state of Kansas every, willingly, every day, risk their lives, put their family's health at risk, and they didn't get a raise this year. But the judge that upheld the closing of uh, churches on Easter got a 15% raise. I'm going to vote for that. So I didn't vote for that. Can we take that one step beyond? Yeah. Is there any, I have not heard, but I know other states are going through this now. <clears throat> Business is requiring the quote vaccine, which is not a vaccine. It's an MNRA yeah. transfer yeah. device. But the point is that do we have a similar thing that businesses can mandate employees have that this uh, shot? I wanted to get that passed. Um, it didn't get passed, but if there's no if there's no official if there's no official um, uh, passport, how do they prove that somebody got it? Yeah, so it's what I could, what we can do at the state. Now, what I'd say is, if somebody if somebody's forced to get a vaccine, if I'm forced to get a vaccine by my workplace, I'm going to sue the hell out of them because you're forcing me to get a treatment that's not approved by the FDA. And I think that that, plus there not being a practical way to enforce it, I, I know it's messy. I really do, I know it's messy, but I think that it's gonna deter it from happening here in Kansas. Yes, sir. Just to kind of add to the deal for kids, I think the CDC is doing an investigation right now. Can't remember how many kids it is, I don't know what the ages are, but uh, after they got the vaccine that they had a heart inflammation. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm not for sure. Well, and, and you of. just you look at this, and there's. I think I I was telling him for for myself, yeah. you know, because everybody says you can't get vaccine, you can't. I'm just gonna start saying on principle because it's none of your business. On on principle, I don't answer that question. Yeah. Done. Tell me, arm but, hurts. <laughs> but, yeah. My arm always hurts. But but we. I think if everybody like yeah. it's none of your business, yeah. you know, and, and it's not. Yeah. There's there's good evidence for people to get it, and there's nothing wrong with that, and there's evidence yeah. against it, and you all get to everybody's gonna look at their personal like, well, what kind of risk am I at? Yeah. If I already had it, if I do, you know, and all, all of these, yeah. all of these. I just, I, wanna, yeah. I just look them in the eye. I I, I, I had COVID back in '15. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it just, it's a big joke, and they and they move on, you know. I'm gonna. I I, I want to close out the vaccine. Fact, she put yeah. out a paper saying in 15 that hydroxychloroquine was and isn't. I've got that on my phone. If you want to, yeah. I'll pull it up. Well, you know, it's in, a big deal when Biden's administration is putting out a 1.5 million dollar yeah. campaign yeah. or commercial. So I want I want I want to close out the vaccine. Uh, topic because I want to talk about one last thing before we wrap up and then I'm going to hang out and drink coffee and maybe a cookie from my wife so uh, uh, so and you can we can talk one on one but uh, on the vaccine thing you know when they were doing the mask thing it was so insidious how they did it they didn't say you need to wear a mask so you don't get sick because you know they, they said you need to wear a mask if you care about other people, oh, yeah. so you don't make them sick. I'm like, that is, whoever sat down and thought that up, I don't like him, but I still want to shake his hand. Because that was brilliant. That's the way you do it, right? You don't say, you selfish jerk. You're not wearing a mask You're because you don't care about other people, right? They're trying to do the same thing with the vaccine, but it just doesn't make any damn sense. Because if you're vaccinated, if you're worried and you get vaccinated, 
What do you care if I'm vaccinated? Really? Right. And that's in the back there. Is that? And they're trying to, well, if we don't reach herd immunity, then these variants, and, well, wait a second, the, said the vaccine covers all the variants. So, right. so but I think that the, that psychology yeah, yeah. Can be used yeah. in all oh, yeah. kinds yeah. of ways. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, not necessarily. You stole my thunder. You yeah. stole my thunder. Uh, uh, so the, the, the point, <laughs> but so the, 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 it's all, you can see it, it's all tumbling down now, right? Yeah, you go to, go to Walmart today, yeah. you go to Home Depot today, people are done because the, the logic, the, the teetering, swaying, overcome, over-encumbered logic of it is all finally collapsed and it's going away. But the big point is exactly what you just said. You know, when's the next thing? What's the next thing? And so I want to circle back around to what I said, uh, you know, what I said a little bit earlier. You know, elections have consequences, and we've discovered that where the rubber meets the road is where it matters the most. You know, so, you know, I, we'll, we'll, we can, like I said, we can talk one-on-one, -on -one, but get out there, engage these, uh, these municipal candidates that have filed the run, I mean, we've got over 10 or more in the city commission, so there's going to be a uh, primary. Um, you know, they, uh, the school board, I think there's like seven people filed and maybe more by, mon by Monday on the filing deadline, or no, Tuesday, 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 Tuesday on the filing Tuesday. deadline. And so if, if, they don't, if they don't knock on your door, in my opinion, I mean, if they knock on your door and you ain't there, you know, you can't do anything about it. But if they don't even go to your door and knock on your door and ask you for your vote, first of all, that tells you a lot about them right there, right? They don't, they don't care enough about what you think or what, how you feel about issues to even come out and knock on your door. So if they don't even come out and see, now, you know, I mean, there's only so many days to the election, so it might be they don't get to your door personally, but they've probably been to one of your neighbor's doors or whatever. And then there's gonna be forums, right? Every year for municipal elections, the, uh, the uh, um, Leavenworth Chamber and League of Women Voters, they have forums, and you can come and you can ask these questions to those candidates. Get get involved, get informed, and then tell all your neighbors that you can't get involved. At least get them informed and get them out to vote because the next one's coming. The next, I mean, this is only, we're like how many months into the Biden administration? We got three years of this crap before we can get rid of this guy. It's gonna be one thing after another.